Salesforce's values are the foundation of how we do business and they're embedded in our products. Trailhead, our free online learning platform, nurtures and builds lifelong learners, which is fundamental to innovation. Equality is woven into Trailhead's DNA as we provide free access to anyone who wants to learn skills for the new norm. And our guest today, Standard Bank CEO, Sim Shabalala gets it. Standard Bank, Africa's biggest lender by assets, will be able to build a single source of truth across the entire customer journey and respond quickly to changing customer needs with the power of the Customer 360 platform. And they know that part of the digital imperative is empowering employees with new skills, something they are doing with Trailhead. Sim is leading by example. He's not just talking the talk, he's walking the walk as he has risen to the rank of Ranger and he's not stopping anytime soon. 20,000 Trailhead Rangers is his goal. Sim knows that reskilling has never been more crucial and that's why he's so invested in Trailhead. So whether you are looking to transform your career or empower your employees to upskill at your company, Trailhead democratizes learning for all. Good morning, I'm Leah McGowan Hare and welcome to another one of our live weekly conversations as part of Leading Through Change series. A chance for you to hear from leaders from around the world that are doing their best to navigate these challenging times and support their communities. Now, before I turn it over to today's host, Salesforce President and Chief Revenue Officer, Gavin Patterson, I wanna preview the next hour. Gavin had the chance to sit down earlier with Standard Bank CEO, Sim Shabalala, to talk about how he's transforming his company from a bank into a broader platform company that is there for their customers at major life moments. Now. We'll then dive into a live demo highlighting the power of Marketing Cloud Social Studios. Finally, we will close with a special performance by LT Smooth. And as we do every week on Leading Through Change, we wanna help those who need it the most. Millions of people already rely on United Nations World Food Program for the food they need to survive. And let's be real, COVID-19, is making conditions even worse. This pandemic could double the number of people suffering from severe hunger by the end of the year. To help prevent a hunger pandemic, the World Food Program is scaling up to reach 138 million people across 83 countries with life-saving support. Now, if you can, please go to salesforce.com slash WFP and join us in ensuring the world's most vulnerable people have enough to eat during this critical time. Through September 30th, 2020, Salesforce will be matching donations up to $150,000. Again, that's salesforce.com slash WFP. With that, it is my pleasure to welcome our host for today, Gavin Patterson. Thank you so much, Leah. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Leading Through Change is all about how we can learn from each other and in particular, lead through challenging times. This has been a disruptive year for many industries, including financial services. And our guest today knows all about that. But he also knows a lot about turning disruption into positive change and opportunity. So I'm delighted today to have Sim Shabalala, who is the Group CEO of Standard Bank, a South, Af South African financial services company based in Johannesburg. They also happen to be Africa's largest lender by assets. It's an incredible Salesforce customer, and Sim is a, an inspiring leader and a visionary as well. So Sim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Gavin. Now, you have a fascinating story to, to tell us about and a very, very big job, but I'd love to start with 
telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, we're all keen to know a little bit about uh, how you've developed yourself as an individual, where you've come from. Um, you're definitely somebody who could be a citizen of the world. So tell us about yourself. Ah, right, Gavin, thank you ever so much for this real lovely privilege and thank you for that beautiful introduction. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful to be with you uh, today. Uh, about me, you could say that I'm a, a South African, I'm Zulu, uh, I'm an Anglican, a Presbyterian, uh, if, you, if you like. Uh, I grew up uh, in Soweto, uh, which is just to the southwest of Johannesburg. I studied at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, I'm an amateur cook, and I'm the father of two lovely, lovely, and brilliant daughters. Uh, but I think there are three things that I'd like to underscore in answer to your question. The first one is that I'm rural born, as I said to you. Uh, grew up in Soweto during the dying days of apartheid, during really, really difficult times. Uh, as a consequence, I think I have an abiding, uh, a really deep commitment to economic and human development of our beloved continent, uh, Africa. Um, and indeed, as the uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, uh, Amatya Sen famously puts it, development is freedom. And I believe that uh, fundamentally. Second, having gone to Catholic schools, uh, Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, uh, and then at high school, uh, at uh, a school called Sacred Heart College here in Johannesburg, which is run by the Marist Brothers, a great Catholic school. I believe deeply in Jesuit principles of leadership and management, which I've picked up over the years. And there's a lovely book uh, on uh, the, the Jesuits uh, that uh, summarizes there are four principles of leadership. The first one being um, heroism, by which they mean you must have the courage to do more uh, and aim extremely high, rather like Salesforce does, really aim high. Secondly, the principle of indifference, that you should not be too attached to places, people, or things, um, but you should be able to move very quickly uh, in order to achieve your goals. Uh, this they refer to uh, as living with one foot raised. I think the third principle here is love, just a deep reverence for humanity. Uh, and then lastly, self-awareness, uh, constantly checking up on yourself and making sure that you're meeting your plans uh, and your objectives. Um, and working for Standard Bank Group uh, has been a real privilege for me. I spent the bulk of my career working for this fantastic institution, which I love. Thank you, Gavin. Well, it's been uh, great to get to know you a little bit over the last few months through our, our video calls and, and to get to understand a little bit more about what Standard Bank does. Uh, and I certainly have been really impressed at the vision that you've had for the business and the scope of the bank, but in particular, how you're a values-driven business. And I'm sure everybody watching today would be really interested in learning more about that. So tell us, tell us more about how you think about the bank and how you see values being at the forefront of your strategy. Ah, Gavin, that's terrific. Uh, first of all, Standard Bank Group is the largest financial institution on the African continent by assets. Uh, it is a huge organization. We employ 50,000 people in 20 countries uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and those businesses or those countries make up roughly 75% of uh, Africa's GDP, sub-Saharan Africa's GDP. We have the privilege of being responsible for $140 billion worth of assets. Now, it may be small in your world, but uh, by African standard, it, it is vast. It's pretty big to me. <laughs> Um, we offer a comprehensive set of products and services for ranging for individual, individuals right across to corporates uh, and governments. We have a retail banking business, a wholesale banking business, wealth business, uh, insurance, uh, and asset management. We're also an old institution. Uh, the business was founded in 1862. And Gavin, behind you is a lovely picture of uh, uh, a, a uh, uh, a jersey, uh, which makes reference to a football club that I will not mention, but I will mention Standard Chartered, which appears there. And Standard Chartered actually was a shareholder of the Standard Bank Group up until the mid 1980s. Right? I didn't so it's know It's an that. old and deeply uh, rooted institution on the African continent. And in fact, the business was founded in a town called Port Elizabeth, 
by sheep merchants, not by bankers, but by sheep merchants, um, who wanted to offer intermediation services to the farmers, to the merchants. They linked uh, the business up with uh, European and uh, 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 English buyers and sellers who were deeply involved in the Industrial Revolution. So it's an old institution with deep roots. Um, those early days, in my view, Gavin, continue to shape uh, our culture and who we are. Uh, we're not in finance simply for finance's sake. Uh, we have a higher calling. Uh, we're a real economy financial institution. I mean, as you would think about it in the UK, we're a high street bank or main street, if you think about it in US terms. And we're also a relationship bank. Uh, relationships to us are deep. Uh, and we find and we believe that they're the essence of, of what we do. I also have to say that building a relationship with Salesforce has actually been quintessential of what we stand for, I have to say to you. And it's been very easy for us. And you ought to ask why. And I would say to you, it is because our values mirror one another and they chime. So, for example, your Ohana culture fits identically, perfectly with our principles of Ubuntu, which Ubuntu means uh, humanity. I am who I am because of you. Uh, the essence of you know, humanity is uh, the human relations between individuals, communities, and indeed uh, the cosmos. Very, very similar to, to, to what you, you believe in. Ohana says uh, we take care of each other. This is what we do uh, with Ubuntu. So your core values uh, of trust, customer success, innovation, and uh, equality and equity are identical to our principles that revolve around integrity, placing clients at the center of what we do, um, and becoming a truly human, truly human and truly digital organization. Thanks, Kevin. That was uh, interesting you, you, you said that because one of the things that struck me as we got to know each other over the last few months and uh, um, finalised the deal was, you know, the conversation always started with values. It always started by talking about what was important to ourselves and, uh, and the companies we work for. And I, I think that's one of the things that's certainly from my perspective has really drawn us together uh, and gives me great confidence that, um, you know, we will be able to help, I think, support you on your mission, because I think we're very aligned with, with what you believe in. Absolutely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about disruption. Um, now if there's one industry that is, I think, taking disruption head on at the moment and feeling the effects of it, it it's financial services. Um, I'm really keen to hear your take on, on that, and particularly the impact it's having from a competition perspective. Well, Gavin, I think the changes happening in financial services are mind-boggling uh, and they're mind-blowing. Um, we're getting very, very strong messages from the investment community, uh, from the stock market, and indeed from the market for financial services. Uh, if you just think about what the market is saying to us, we think it's saying, firstly, it pays to be a platform provider. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think secondly, what the market is telling us is that it pays to be a digital leader um, and that the market clearly believes that the largest and strongest firms will definitely do the best post this crisis, this 100, one in a hundred year uh, pandemic that we are experiencing. Um, and having said that, uh, allow me, if I may, to be so bold as to congratulate you, Gavin, and Salesforce for uh, uh, for entering the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Yet Thank another you. clear message, I believe, from the, the stock market. Uh, really lovely story. The message is equally clear from people who are looking to enter the market of financial services. Uh, we know David Marcus, the CEO of Calibra, has been very articulate about what is possible in emerging markets uh, and in payments. Uh, I had a look at the um, uh, the website of ING, uh, the famous Dutch bank, the BEMA, the huge uh, European uh, bank. And if one reads how they describe themselves, it sounds almost like a tech company. Um, they describe themselves very much as a platform uh, uh, business and an ecosystem curator. 
Uh, and so this is what the market is telling us. This is what competitors are telling us. And it therefore makes sense that the competitive landscape uh, is well mapped. Uh, and it seems to us that our strategic situation is very clear. We have to become a platform and ecosystem provider too uh, in order to defend ourselves uh, or else we will become a back office uh, generating thin margins and become quickly irrelevant. I'd like to sort of explore that a little bit more, uh, if I may, Sim. Um, you want to move from being seen as a, a banking provider to one that's a, a platform business. And I think to use your term, one that's future ready um, is, is the term that I've, I've heard you use in the, in, the, in the past. Can you tell us what a sort of platform business means uh, in your mind? Give us a sense of what that, that will look like. So, Gavin, in fact, the best place to start actually is in ancient history. You know, the first banks uh, made their appearance roughly 4,000 years ago in Babylon. Um, and the word bank simply means a platform or a bench uh, on which people would bring cash or jewels uh, to the money changer or money lender at the temple or in the market, in the Roman forum. And the roots of the word bank actually are exactly that, a banker, which means a platform, a sturdy platform. Uh, in essence, then, to be a platform for us as a financial institution is uh, bringing together buyers, sellers, importers, exporters, uh, people who require uh, excess cash uh, in order to, 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 to make payments, um, people who are importing goods, uh, people who are exporting goods, and to do that on our infrastructure and for us to govern the relationships that exist between the various buyers and sellers. And that in a sense uh, to us, it seems is precisely what we've done as a bank from time immemorial, but to pivot and do it properly <laughs> rather than simply be a seller of products to be a coordinator of relationships, which is uh, something that I think we are good at as a financial institution. And so we think of ourselves then in that context uh, as a digital platform provider and ecosystem curator. Um, we think of it by using the analogy of a shopping mall. In this sense, we say that uh, we intend to be uh, a mall. Uh, we want to own the mall as well as having our own shop in the mall. Um, so we will own the mall, uh, but we'll also have our own shop there. But we also think that uh, all other goods and services that our clients are likely to need, we need to be able to help them to acquire those goods and products. And in that case, we'll make sure that these services are safely, conveniently, and reliably available in our mall. Um, and we will, of course, collect rent uh, from our tenants in return for the space and services that uh, we provide. Um, I think your products and services and our relationship with you, in my view, puts us in a great position to be able to do precisely that. Uh, we can mention many examples of where we're already doing that. Uh, the one example is a pro proposition called One Farm, which we're providing to our clients in Uganda, which is uh, in East Africa. Um, and uh, these are exciting things, uh, things that we normally would not have thought of as bankers five to 10 years ago. Um, and as you can hear, and as I say, the capacities which you have as Salesforce are crucial in helping us to become this more, this platform or ecosystem curator. And tell us more about how your technology choices help you realize your vision, and obviously, particularly Salesforce. The, the technology choices in this context are about um, are the people that we're going to acquire these technologies from people who are, we are able to partner with? Are they people who share our values? Are they people who share our vision? Um, do they put us in a position to uh, meet our purpose, which is Africa is our home, we drive a growth? Uh, what is the nature of the products and services that they have? Um, are they able to help us create new value for clients, particularly clients on the African continent? Uh, will they help us to become this large mall that is uh, occupying an important place uh, in Africa? 
And personalization is, is key to realizing this vision, isn't it, Sim? Um, tell us more about how you're realizing that aspect of the vision. I think it's very, very important that um, the millions of customers that we already have uh, uh, on our, in our base need to be able to feel that we know them, um, that we are using tools and capabilities that uh, allow us to know their needs uh, when they arise, that we are present at each of their life journeys, whether it be the acquisition of a home, uh, a health uh, 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 issue uh, a young child being sent to school or to university. And we need to be able to have tools and skills that help us to identify those needs and help us our, and help our clients meet those needs. And I would say to you that uh, the various uh, tools and instruments that are available with Salesforce give us the ability to service our clients uh, at the right time, uh, 24 hours a day, at a time when it's, it's most convenient for those clients. I want to talk about Trailhead, Sim. Um, we have been absolutely blown away by your commitment to Trailhead. Um, we found it extraordinarily inspiring how you've set the ambition for 20,000 colleagues across Standard Bank to become rangers. Tell us, tell us why that's so important to you. So, Gavin, first of all, I have to brag, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> I was tempted to wear it. but I'd love uh, to see you wear it. Yeah, I was going to wear it, but it's quite hot today, so I thought I wouldn't. And I wanted to look a little bit more like a banker so that your, your colleagues and staff would believe that actually I am a banker. So I have to look reasonably uh, respectable as if somebody as somebody that you would be happy to place your deposit with. Um, <laughs> but... But I think why is this important to us? Uh, to be blunt, Gavin, uh, this is an enormous investment for us. The investment in this partnership is enormous. Um, it goes to the heart of what we need to become, as we said, wanting to be future ready and be competitive, uh, pivot and become far more competitive than we've been over the last, last decade. Uh, and so becoming this platform business is absolutely central to, to our strategy. Therefore, our relationship with you, with Salesforce, is crucial. Uh, I can't emphasize it more than that. And to make the most of the investment, we believe that Standard Bank people need to understand what Salesforce offers. And it can't just be a small handful of techies. We want it to be ubiquitous. It has to be as many of the 50,000 people who work for us as is reasonably practical. And I'll take it even further. Even our partners, outside the relationship with Salesforce have to understand, our clients have to understand and be able to take advantage of what is on offer here. Um, as I say, I mean, it was a real privilege for me to become a ranger. Um, I worked very hard, um, but I'm delighted I did because I know what's on offer. I also know indeed what the challenges and what the pitfalls are, but I know what the massive opportunities are. Um, and we have, Roughly 860 ranges so far. It's early days. You know, we're not, not anywhere near where Salesforce is at 20,000, but we got 858 rangers. We got 9,000 active trailhead users, and that number grows every day throughout the countries where we operate. Uh, collectively, we've scored 83 million points, and believe you wow. me, we will get more. We're inspired by you. Uh, I wish I could stand here one day and say that we've got uh, more rangers than Salesforce. It's a dream, but I know that it won't come true, but we'll try. We'll try very hard. Um, and Trailhead really, really is fantastic. Uh, it's accessible. It's friendly. It's written in plain and simple English. Uh, it's gamified. And the learning there is just vast. I'm still blown over by what uh, one is able to learn. In fact, there's an email that I received from a guy who was a skeptic, I must tell you this. He's now at 180,000 points. Wow. And his email to me is typical. 180,000. Not a mistake. That's incredible. Quite incredible. And his email to me was is typical of the emails I'm getting from my colleagues. Uh, he said something like, thank you very much, Sim, uh, for leading uh, the importance of Trailhead uh, and leading by example. 
it's not often that we get the privilege to test drive the tech that we purchase. I'm convinced that well thought through development and deployment of Salesforce as an asset beyond business as usual will in turn create a sustainable competitive advantage. So my colleagues, Gavin, are telling me that having gone through this experience uh, on Trailhead, they believe it'll improve the customer experience and it will improve the market positioning of Standard Bank. What more could one ask for? Yeah, that, it's truly inspiring. Uh, and we, we take your challenge uh, to, <laughs> to see whether or not you have, can have more Trailheads than Salesforce. But it's, it's a fantastic example for us to use with other uh, organizations we're working with around the world. Um, I think you've really set the benchmark in, in this area. So. Um, I want to move on and talk about the company's vision, uh, which you mentioned earlier. Africa is our home. We drive her growth. There's a beautiful simplicity and, and, and punchiness to it. Can you share some of your thoughts on you know, how success could be a large beacon uh, of light for the entire uh, region of Africa? Well, you know, Gavin, uh, yeah, Africa is our home. We drive her growth. If you ask me what gets me excited, what do I wake up dreaming about it? It is what contribution I and my colleagues are making to the development of our beloved continent. And in that context, we deeply committed uh, to promoting sustainable human and economic development in Africa. Um, and in one sense, we are really pushing against an open door. This is already happening. Uh, many countries where we operate, uh, particularly in the East Coast, are already growing and developing very fast. And so our contribution is to make them grow even faster. Uh, in the middle of this crisis, uh, the East African countries are not going to go into recession, largely because of the policies and the rational implementation of policy that has been effected uh, in East Africa. And Africa, as you know, Gavin, has got a formidable uh, demographic. The demographic dividend incredible. Uh, is incredible. And the potential is just vast. It is vast, uh, particularly in an aging world. And I do think that people with a vision, people like us and yourselves working together, uh, can do something quite special on the continent as the continent uh, uh, develops. Uh, and particularly as we take advantage of this uh, fantastic demographic dividend. Um, and we are aligned as far as this goes. I am really looking forward to achieving this vision in partnership with, uh, with Salesforce. And so we are too. Um, so just as I, I wrap up things today, any final thoughts uh, you'd like to share with us? Well, Gavin, I think you've asked me a, a wide range of questions. I think all I can do is really underscore a couple of the points I've made. The first one is we love being your partners. We are delighted and long may this partnership last. Uh, notice I'm not using vendor, buyer and seller language. I'm talking about a partnership, a relationship where value is going to be created and we're going to add enormous value together. That's the first one. The second, I think we can make a massive difference uh, on the African continent. Um, and we can see it in our lifetime. This is why this is so exciting. And finally, I want to thank you ever so much. Really, really thank you for having me today. Um, and I love the opportunity to have compared uh, Salesforce Ohana with Standard Bank Ubuntu. Thank you, Sim. Um, it's been a, a real privilege to get to know you personally. Uh, and I'm very excited about the opportunities that we have to work together, not just over the next few months, but over the next few years. So I'm looking forward to that. I think we're gonna do great things together. Um, and so thank you today. And uh, with that, I'm gonna hand back to, to Leah. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you, Sim. What an inspirational story, Sim. Your story is amazing. And then, you know, we're looking forward to that challenge of getting more Trailhead Rangers in Salesforce. Bring it on, let's do it. The more rangers, the better. Now I'm excited to hand it off to my colleague, Lee Price, Marketing Cloud's very own Senior Product Marketer Manager to talk about Social Studio. Thanks, Leah. I am so excited to be here live from Austin, Texas to show you the power of Social Studio. 
Now, more than ever, companies need to be listening to their customers. In order to be successful, every company in every industry, whether it's financial services, consumer goods, manufacturing, it doesn't matter. They all need to put their customers at the center of everything. And Social Studio does just, just that. Let's see how. We're going to start with a social listening dashboard. And let's say I'm working in a grocery chain's digital marketing team here in Texas. I'm particularly interested in the changing needs of customers related to curbside pickup during COVID-19. I've plugged in some keywords related to this topic to understand what customers are saying. So here on the left side of the screen, I can see a live feed of all the social posts mentioning these keywords, very handy for real-time reaction. I can also see volume across different channels. If we look at reviews, I can filter by one star or five star reviews to see what themes are present. This is very helpful for getting insight into competitors as well. Next, I can look at discussion over time and hone in on peaks in conversation to understand what's getting people talking. If I click on this peak in discussion, I can see discussion on a parenting forum about the unique needs and concerns of pregnant mothers and curbside pickup. Going back to the dashboard, I can also see influencers to partner with to get the word out and the top words that are being mentioned on this topic. Any unexpected or unusual words are often a source of insight here. As a grocery chain, this is where I'd start to see words like toilet paper bubble up if that's what's top of mind for consumers. So as we see these top words pop up, I can see people are talking about things like masks, restaurant curbside, and opening hours for curbside pickup. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, of course, I can measure sentiment in real time for any topic. Another great source of insights is any peak in discussion where negative sentiment rises above positive sentiment. So now we've seen an example of a topic with a dashboard. Let's start digging into social data for insights with workbenches. You can see there's lots of ways to analyze the data. We'll start with volume trends. By clicking on a peak in discussion, I can continue honing in on that data. Let's look at the top words for this peak in conversation to get a quick overview of what people were saying on this day. Looks like groceries were a top topic here. And I can also see people discussing curbside versus home delivery for groceries as some of the other top keywords that are popping up here. This is a great way to get a very quick overview of what people were saying at a moment in time. So I wonder what the sentiment looks like for mentions of curbside compared to delivery. So let's open up a sentiment chart for curbside and another sentiment chart for delivery as well. That way we can compare them side by side. So we'll wait for those charts to open up. And it looks like people have slightly higher positive sentiment for grocery delivery compared to curbside. So let's go back and look at all uh, sentiment for all mentions of curbside over the month. I can see this is around 64% positive. I wanna help our customers by seeing what's working and what's not working. So I'm gonna open up all the images being posted in positive sentiment posts. When I look at this in detail, I can even sort by influence level to see what those influential accounts are saying. Looks like uh, there's some news being shared about the explosion in the popularity of curbside. Maybe my PR team could get involved there. And I can also see the American Red Cross discussing a curbside baby shower. Maybe that's a content marketing topic I can use with the mums to be that I saw earlier in the dashboard. Now let's hone in on negative sentiment. Maybe this is varying from location to location. It looks like this is generating the most negative discussion in Houston. So I'm gonna make a note to investigate the root cause of this further. Finally, let's look at the websites people, people are mentioning most frequently in any posts referencing curbside. It looks like the Austin Independent School District's food service message is really resonating. It's getting shared frequently. Perhaps this is something I can bear in mind with community support when I'm talking about my brand. So with all these social insights, I can already see that grocery delivery is generating more positive sentiment than curbside. So I'm going to include that option front and center in my next email send. We already published uh, social posts about our community outreach efforts, 
but I can see that speaking more about how we're already helping local schools will really resonate. I've also uncovered some potential audiences I can speak to with targeted messages, the expecting mums, and addressing those concerns that we saw locally at Houston. So that's an overview of how we can dive very deep into social data for actionable insights around our brand in real time. And that's just the start. Listening is just one part of how you can build amazing social customer experiences with Social Studio. You'll find more details on the Salesforce website. Now back to you, Leah. Thank you, Lee. That was great. Now, if you're inspired and you want to learn more about Marketing Cloud, Trailhead, and the Customer 360 platform, check out this trail mix at sfdc.co slash TSB. Once again, sfdc.co slash TSB. Now, are you ready? Are you really ready to get swept away to the islands with the smooth sounds of LT Smooth? It is my pleasure to bring them in. Take us away, LT. The way sparkling daring play against your skin is so brown. And I want to sleep with you in the desert tonight with a billion stars all around. I've got a peaceful, easy feeling.
Through the years, God has brought us this far And bless us with the memories we hold Through the good times and the bad And the happiest times and the sad For you was just transported to a happy, beautiful place. And it's real, I'm here. Thank you, LT, that was amazing. And thank you all for joining us today. Now you can find more of our Leading Through Change stories at salesforce.com slash blog. Now, before we wrap up, one more reminder to join us in making sure millions of people worldwide do not go hungry during this crisis. If you can, please go to salesforce.com slash WFP and join us in helping this organization. Through September 30th, 2020, Salesforce will match donations up to $150,000. Again, that's salesforce.com slash WFP. Now we'll be back with our next Leading Through Change this Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 
with the story of how Siemens keeps innovating after over 150 years as the original trailblazers. You don't wanna miss this one. Now, until then, please take care of yourself and each other. Sales Cloud lets you build business resilience and create growth with the world's number one trusted sales solution. First, as a business leader, you can easily get insight into your business so you know where to focus your efforts and make decisions based on market changes. You can visualize and redistribute your customer territories, shifting your sales coverage to meet changing market demand. Then quickly update sales processes to adapt to change with drag and drop tools and scale to sales reps instantly. So your sales team develops the new skills they need based on proven best practices, allowing your team to work more efficiently from anywhere. Also, sales reps can manage deals from a single workspace and track every customer interaction from a single source of truth, the Customer 360, powered by AI to boost productivity and guide deals forward. While configuring the deal to meet every customer need with flexible pricing, terms, and payment methods, Lastly, scale your business through partners, bringing them up to speed quickly so they can start to close deals just as fast. Quickly adapt and build business resilience and growth from anywhere with SalesCloud.